Good morning. I'm here to talk about VBS. Believe it or not, it's coming up. Um, It's the first first week in June. Is that right? I didn't think about the date before I got up here. Second week in June. Um, So I'm here to talk about something that Ryan and I started a a few years back when we took on the youth director position. Um, We felt like the fifth graders Um, Some of the activities for them were very appropriate, but others were maybe a little too young for them, and we felt that maybe we could bump it up a little bit and make it a little more exciting for the fifth graders. So we started this um, getting them out into the community um, project. And so we take, Ryan and I take only the fifth graders out of Gloria Day and get them out into the community and serve. Um, We have made cookies here. Um, and made some potted plants and flowers for some of our shut-ins, and then we go to visit some of our shut-ins. It's been lovely. Esther, we've come to see you a couple times. Very nice. Um, We've done lemonade stands to benefit um, the Humane Society. We've pulled weeds. Uh, We've worked with a gentleman who refurbishes um, old bikes and um, gives them to people in our community in need. Um, we've worked with the food pantry in Akron, we've worked with our very own sandwich people, so it's a really great program for those fifth graders. Um, They really look forward to feeling that importance of helping their community. Um, So if you have a current fourth grader, going to be fifth grader, um, we've got a great program for them. Um, We also do something new again uh, that we've done a couple, past couple years, um, for all of the youth volunteers, middle school through high school, Um, after they work uh, so hard getting these littles uh, around and doing all their activities, we reward them with a lunch and a fun activity every single day after VBS. So again, we've gone to the movies, we've gone roller skating, we've gone bowling, um, we've done fun and, or um, not fun and stuff, Sky Zone, uh, miniature golf. We we do all kinds of really fun things with these kids and it's a great way to kind of reward them because they really do work hard and um, they pour their all their effort and energy into these kids all day long. So, um, again, if you have any middle schoolers or high schoolers that are looking to have some fun for VBS and volunteer, we would love to have them. We are also still looking for um, an adult to lead uh, missions, music, and games. So, um, if you are available, we could definitely use your help. Um, and, again, just prayers for our VBS um, event this summer and we're all looking forward to it. It's getting getting close. Thank you. Thank you, Laura, so much for doing that. We come today to the second Sunday of Easter. The readings are going to move us on a ways, but it's still Easter in a lot of ways. But as you watch and listen to the reaction of the disciples, it's not Easter. They're still living as though it's Good Friday. We want to talk about that in our application of what does all of that mean. So listen carefully as we go through the readings. The hymns are joyful today. Good Easter music to lift heart and spirit. So I want to again thank you for coming. Would you stand, greet one another? We also want to say a warm welcome to everyone who's watching online. Let's begin. Come. Um. 
Please join responsibly now as we begin with our invocation and then our memory verse for the month. We worship this morning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our memory verse is Isaiah 25. He will swallow up death forever and the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces and the reproach of his people he will take away from all the earth for the Lord has spoken. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in the darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. If anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as a called and ordained servant of Christ, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, grant that we who have celebrated the Lord's resurrection may, by your grace, confess in our life and conversation that Jesus is Lord and God. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. first reading is from Acts chapter 4, verses 32 to 35. The full number of those who believed were of one heart and soul, 
and no one said that any of the things that belonged to him was his own, but they had everything in common. And with great power, the apostles were giving their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as were owners of lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold and laid it at the apostles' feet and was distributed to each as any had need. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from 1 John chapter 1, verse 1 through chapter 2, verse 2. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and have touched with our hands concerning the word of life. The life was made manifest, and we have seen it and testify to it, and proclaim to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and, which, and was made manifest to us. That which we have seen and heard, we proclaim also to you, so that you too may have fellowship with us. And indeed, our fellowship is with the Father and his, with his Son, Jesus Christ. And we are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior, John, the 20th chapter. Thanks be to God. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side, then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of anyone, they are forgiven. If you withhold forgiveness from anyone, it is withheld. Now Thomas, one of the twelve called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails and place my finger into the mark of the nails and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and put out your hand and place it into my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God, Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We renew and affirm our faith one another with the Apostles' Creed. 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The adults may be seated, and I invite the children to come forward for our children's message. Boys and girls, good morning. It's nice to see you and those bright smiles today. Let me ask this. Last Sunday, did anyone's house get visited by the Easter Bunny? Did you get eggs, jelly beans, chocolate rabbits, peeps? You got peeps, okay. Oh, well, I'm glad that you do love peeps. Peeps are great. And you still got them. The Easter Bunny knows a lot. But you know what? I'm not happy with the Easter Bunny. I knew I was going to come and talk to you today, and I went through my house, and you know what I found? I found my Easter basket. With something inside it. No. The chocolate bunny box was empty this morning. We had colored eggs, plastic. They had Hershey Kisses inside, and you know what? Nothing. My basket had beautiful green grass in it for all the others, and you know what's inside my basket? Nothing. Nothing, nothing in the eggs, nothing in the basket, and the chocolate bunny is gone. Well, it is weird. And you know what? At the time of Jesus, on the days after Easter, even though he rose from the dead with a lot of joy and happiness to change everything, the disciples acted like I did. They were sad. Easter's over. But Jesus wants you to know today, and me and all of the adults, that because he rose from the dead, his joy, his forgiveness, and his love keeps on going. We might not have chocolate bunnies and jelly beans anymore, but one thing even better, our Lord Jesus is with us always to give us all the blessings he has. Yes, ma'am? I got a chocolate bird. Well, you didn't bring it to share it with me. <laughs> Let's say our prayer. Would you fold your hands, please? I got Dear Father in heaven, Thank you for loving us and being with us every day. Help us have Easter always. Amen. Thanks, boys and girls. You can go back and sit down.
brothers and sisters in Christ, God's grace, mercy, peace, abounding hope and joy be yours through our risen Lord and Savior Jesus. Amen. Let's start with an unscientific poll. How many of you had chocolate at your house for Easter? Raise the hands. How many of you brought chocolate to share with the old pastor today? <laughs> yep, you know, thankfully I will be somewhere else next week. <laughs> I'm kidding. Actually, you're stuck with me for a while. That's okay. Easter brings a lot of joy. We were blessed at our house. Our children all came home. We have four children, married, lots of grandkids. It's a big time. But Easter's over. As I said to the children, the grass is out of the basket. The ears are off the chocolate bunny. The nice clothes are hanging back in the closet. We came, we sang, we saw, we celebrated. It's over. Or it feels that way. But is it over? Let me make you smile. Last Tuesday, when some of the people went back to class, one of the fourth grade boys named Tom had a horrific bruise on the back of his hand. His teacher looked at it and said, Tommy, what happened to your hand? Kind of non-thinking, he said, well, that's because of Easter candy. The teacher said, Easter candy does not put bruises on the back of your hand. He said, it does if it's your big brother's rabbit. <laughs> and so you think, okay, where are we going with all this? Well, where we're going is back to Jerusalem, to the upper room. Easter wasn't over. And as you listen to the gospel reading today, it continues. That picks us up at Easter night. Those beginning verses we didn't read, we read last week. That's when the women are on the way to the tomb. They find it empty. They find angels. They're running. They're not so sure where are we at. What does all this mean? And that night, what it meant was Jesus went to the locked upper room with the disciples. This morning, I want to tell you about three parts of that that matter to us. One is place, two is peace, three is presence. So let's start with place first. The disciples went to a room out of the way that no one would really see them or know them or find them. The door is locked. Why are they there? Probably because they had just witnessed Good Friday a couple days earlier. They saw what Jesus went through. The agony, the trial, the spear, the crown of thorns, the mocking, and yes, that last breath before he died on the cross. You don't think that that was in their mind, that what happened to him could happen to them? Place matters. It matters a lot. Jesus didn't meet the disciples in the beautiful temple that Solomon built in Jerusalem with all the magnificence. He didn't go meet them at anybody's house. He wasn't on the Sea of Galilee in one of the ships or the grassy knolls that they knew. He wasn't in the Garden of Gethsemane praying again. He went where they were. I don't know about you, but I need to be reminded of that once in a while. I say to my students at Kent State on struggling days, Life gets messy. It really does. Where do you want God to be? Don't you want him in a hectic workplace, in a noisy classroom, in a sterile hospital room, around a noisy kitchen table? One of the most beautiful blessings of our God. He comes where we are. And he did that Easter night to the frightened, scared disciples. He comes to you where you are when you need him. And he doesn't do it just to occupy time. He comes to give us peace. 
Those words that he said to the disciples, and it was repeated four times in our gospel reading, peace be with you, peace be with you, peace be with you. We say that lots of times in many ways in the course of a day, in the course of a week, one to another. Peace, 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 be quiet. Wait a minute. I did the old-fashioned thing and got out my dictionary and I looked up antonyms. What's the opposite of God's peace? Conflict, hatred, prejudice, bigotry, worry, anxiety, doubt, discomfort. And there are 13 more antonyms. Aren't those all tinged with the meaning of sin in a broken world? You can't fault the disciples for being afraid. I know when I'm afraid it's a lack of faith. I get that. But it doesn't keep me from being afraid. We need God's peace. What does it look like? There's an old preacher story, been around a long time, well worth reminding us. A very wealthy patron decided that he wanted a picture in his office Walnut paneled, magnificent place, leather chairs, everything, because he entertained a lot of people, and he wanted the artist to portray peace. So when you went to his office, you're going to look and you're going to say, gosh, it feels great. He found two artists that were local, and he said, okay, I will give you a great cash stipend if you are the one that I select as peace. Both agreed, we can do this. When the designated time came to bring back their work, the first artist unveiled a picture, and it was peace. Blue sky, white clouds, bright sun, green grass, flowers in bloom, dog playing, little guy out on a rowboat on a very quiet pond, birds flying, it was the most beautiful, magnificent scene you could have imagined. It was peace. Or was it? The second artist took the veil off of her work. Black sky. Dark, dark rain clouds, rain being driven sideways, leaves blowing all over the place, trees almost losing their leaves, flowers leaning over, not a person in sight. It's a horrible day. Horrible. But keep looking. Big oak tree. There's a crevasse between the branches. A bird's nest. Mama bird sitting on the eggs, brooding. No earthly predator can harm her. The wind is not going to blow her or the babes away. The wind is not going to drown them. And in the middle of the storm, Mama bird I can only begin to imagine Matthew, Mark, John, Bartholomew, Nathaniel, Philip, what they must have felt like to see the risen Christ. To know that he did not abandon them even though they all left him. Peace be with you. If you forgive sins, they're forgiven, he told them. Wouldn't that feel good in your heart? You're right with God. Absolutely right with God. He's with you in a room. Quiet your hear. Give you peace. I'd love to end here. 
but I won't. Because I said place, peace, and presence. presence. Do I have to start all over again? <laughs> presence. And we're not going to talk about God's presence. This isn't about God. If I just told you all about God and had nothing to do with you and I didn't challenge and invite you, I flunked my job and you ought to tell me, Zachary, just get in your car and go home. You missed it. Presence, 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 presence. It's about you, not about God. So I looked it up this week. There was an article by Kelsey, I forget her last name, Dallas, I believe, and she did it on Monday. This week, USA Today looked it up. She did a thing called What Happened in Church on Easter. Great, looked it up. She said, wow, 43% of all Christians in the United States went to church yesterday. Great. She said, if you are over 60, it was almost 60% of you. If you're 49 and younger, it is less. But when you get to the Sunday after Easter, it drops to 33%. If you're under 40, it drops to 22%. If you're under 18, it's 16%. Why am I saying that? How many apostles were there that week after Easter? Twelve. How many are in the locked upper room? Ten. Judas isn't there. Thomas isn't there. I'm not here to rewrite Christian doctrine. Judas, in a fit of remorse and guilt, went back to the temple where you'd want him to go, went to the high priest who had given him 30 pieces of silver carrying that bag, and his words, according to St. Matthew, are, I have sinned in betraying innocent blood. And what does the high priest say? None of my business. What would have happened if Judas had stayed in the upper room and when Jesus came Judas would have said I sinned do we not believe that our heavenly father through his son would have forgiven Judas would it have changed the story if Judas had stayed with the group and I don't know where Thomas was. The Bible doesn't tell us what he was doing, why, when, where, and all that. But he spent an entire another eight days doubting, anxious, worried, upset that those other ten did not do. Being in the presence of God where there's peace no matter where makes a big, big difference. So let's end with this. Also in the article on Monday, how much money do you think we in the United States spent on Easter this year? The whole of the United States on Easter, what did we spend? $22 billion. How much of that went for candy? $3.1 billion. What percentage of you ate the ears off the bunny rabbit first? No, they've got all the figures. Listen, it's on the internet and it's true. 78% of everybody with the chocolate bunny eats the ears first. And we had 3.4 billion jelly beans in the United States laid end to end. Goes around the world three times. Lots of silliness and facts all about Easter. Three things matter. God with you in the place, no matter. The peace of God that overcomes life and sin and you being there with God. Thanks for being here today. Thanks for inviting him into your heart. Thank God for the wonderful gift of the resurrection of his dear son. Amen. May his peace and presence be yours in abundance. Amen.
please stand as we offer our prayers. Dear Father in heaven, with hearts filled with joy and gratitude at your grace and goodness, we've come to worship you today, to offer our prayers of blessing and need, and to be encouraged by hearing your word, singing your praise, and receiving the body and blood of your dear Son in this Holy Supper. Indeed, be with us throughout the week, each day, and in every place, and in every heart. We pray you to be with Pastor Tritton and Bob Branch and all who are away today. Bring them safely home and back to our family of faith. We ask this, Father, all these things through your Son, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Lord Jesus, we pray that you would use us and the gifts you have given us to serve anyone in need. Open our eyes to see opportunities near and far in which we may serve your gracious plans. All that we have and are belongs to you. Risen Christ, grant us to be of one heart and soul, sharing not only our common faith, but all that we are and have. We pray for people who are homeless, hungry, captive, and in mourning. Surround them, Heavenly Father, with people of faith in our risen Savior, brothers and sisters who will tend to them with compassion and love. We pray for those near and dear to us. Wherever your plans include us, O Lord. Open our hearts and hands, voices and resources, to share the difference Easter makes for all who trust in our risen Savior. We pray for those who are rich and those who are poor, those who influence our nation and those who live unnoticed. O oh, Holy Spirit, be among our brothers and sisters, those who have vast resources, all who make, administer, and judge our laws, and parents, teachers and counselors, all who know Christ as their living Lord. Give them courage and caring hearts so that through them your will shall be done. We pray for our congregation, its programs of outreach and growth, and all who worship here. Lord, over all, be with us and enliven us to do your will in Easter joy. Give us strength to show forth the difference Easter makes for us. Guide and protect us, Heavenly Father, that we may serve you and the people around us in the name of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. On the night in which he was betrayed, our dear Lord and Savior took bread, when he had given thanks, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had done that, he blessed it and gave it to them and said, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood shed for you for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat of this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please be seated for our distribution.
Please stand. May this, the true body and precious blood of your Lord and Savior, strengthen and preserve you in true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace with great joy. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this sacrament. We pray that you would strengthen us by its use each day to praise your gracious name and pass your love on to those whom we meet. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. And our memory verse, he will swallow up death forever, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces, and the reproach of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken.